Some drivers like to follow their nose. Others are more than happy to be told where to go. After 100 yards, bear left. Then more and more people won't leave home without their trusty sat-nav. Well, it's vital to, uh, to find places easily. You sort of, I suppose, take the stress out of going somewhere that you, where you don't know. But what effect does slavishly following directions have on our brains? Neuroscientists at University College London have published research claiming it's quite profound. Volunteers like Will here were taken around Soho, one of the most complicated road networks in the world. They were then put in an MRI scanner and using virtual reality were asked to give directions. So what we did here was look into the human brain, Will's brain and many others, to see is there a part of the brain that knows automatically the number of options or the changes in the number of options. But when the volunteers were told the routes using a sat-nav, scientists noticed the navigational area of the brain, called the hippocampus, stopped working. You're no longer engaging those bits of your brain that you would do normally if you're using your memory to sort of pick apart the street network as you navigate. So effectively, the sat-nav is turning off the engagement of these brain areas. Now this is Seven Dials in Covent Garden and it's called that for a reason. There are seven different roads converging. So I've got lots of options here and my brain is currently trying to work out which road to take. But not just that, which road to take after that and after that and after that. It's processing lots of information to try and get me to my destination as quickly and safely as possible. But this research suggests if I were to activate my sat-nav here, this will do all the decision making for me, so that part of my brain just switches off. Exit roundabout onto Monmouth Street. But there's others you'll go. This research builds on a previous study which found London's black cab drivers have the most developed hippocampus. They have to memorise thousands of roads, routes, and landmarks. It's not in your long term memory, it's in your short term memory. Yeah. So the brain sort of very quickly is, it becomes a sponge once again and it clicks on to that this road leads to this road that leads to that road. Oh, I can't do that road because it's one way. And then over a serious amount of time, it just grows and grows and grows. So that's how, you know, so it is extremely difficult, not just because you've got to know 26,000 roads and thousands and thousands of places of interest, but it's remembering how to remember them again. The research team wants to build on the study to explore the wider medical implications, whether underuse of the hippocampus, for example, contributes to the onset of Alzheimer's dementia. Starting route to WMU. But for the first time, there is firm evidence that switching this on switches off an important part of our brain. Mark Ashdown, BBC London News.